is absent. Alderwoman Eichmann. Here. Alderwoman Wilhelm. Here. Alderwoman Hanneman. Here. Alderman Barber. Is not here. He's not here. Not present. Absent. Uh, not absent, present. Not present. Whatever the word is. Alderman Nelson. Always here. Please rise and join the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is citizens' comment period. Any citizen wishing to speak, please rise, come forward, give us your name and address, and tell us which one thoughts. Mr. Benning, good evening. 20 West Ryan Road. Uh, I just wanted to make comments on three different items. First one would be it's my understanding to accept a piece of property from Bear in exchange for a tax credit. That particular piece of property is worthless. Why would you give up a tax credit for that? It's under extremely high voltage power lines. You can never put anything on it. it why would the city voluntarily give up tax dollars for a worthless piece of land? Two, I see on the agenda, it's back on for the uh, property that was has been discussed as being a future park. It was recommended by the park commission that this be done. Why is this not done already? Why doesn't the city just purchase this and be done with it? And the third comment is on the uh, code of conduct. The code of conduct is very vague. It, there has to be more accountability to the citizens and it's, the way it's set up now, it's pointless because everything goes through pretty much mayorals. So it, it, you need more of an ethics board. Uh, none of the people I talk to feel comfortable about this code of conduct. It, it, it's pretty much ridiculous. Let's get to more of a standard ethics setting. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Ms. Davis. Debbie Davis, 9460 South 96th Street. Um, I also want to announce that I am a candidate in the fall election for the 82nd um, Assembly District for the state of Wisconsin. And uh, I agree with the points that Mr. Benning just made, all three points. Um, I really appreciate the park supporting the purchase, Parks Commission supporting the purchase of that land that we've been speaking towards. Um, there's been a lot of public comment in support of complying with our um, comprehensive plan. I know staff support that as well. So I'm thinking that this has just come up as a procedural thing because it was postponed. So I'm hoping that the council is primarily in support of not rezoning this property, but maintaining our scarce agricultural land until we are ready to turn it um, into um, a park recreational use. So, and secondly, I'm also concerned about the tax credit of this property. I've heard it also holds a retention pond, which I think is the responsibility of the developer to have a retention pond for that development. I could be wrong. I heard that it might be as much as an, a million dollar tax credit, um, which is something that we need. It's much more than what the property was purchased for. And the value of the property increased because we created a TID district a property that already been purchased that's prime property, not blighted property. So um, I want a better understanding of that. And I'd like maybe that decision re-examined if that's the case. And third, code of conduct. I understand we, those are important for municipal government and I appreciate the efforts that's gone in so far to developing it. And I really appreciate the efforts that have gone into refining it. I do want our older people um, to have the capacity to communicate with other public officials. Um, I think the discussion of having a municipal Facebook page is very important, taking our logo off of pages where they don't belong, and the other kind of checks and balances that are included in the revisions. Um, I appreciate that effort, and I would support those. I think that's it. Thank you. 
and I will participate in the meeting um, online. Thanks. Uh, just to be clear, City of Franklin has no authority to issue any tax credits for anything at all. So whoever's been telling you that, don't know what they're talking about. What will would happen if this happens is that the developer would get a credit against their income tax by the federal government as a donation to what it would be considered a charitable organization, that being the city. So get this idea that the city's given tax credits away. Get it out of your mind because it's not true. Anybody else? Anybody else? Seeing no one else rise, I'll close the citizen comment period. We'll move on to approval of the regular meeting minutes of June 7th. Any additions or corrections? <laughs> Hanneman and Eichmann, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we have no public hearings tonight. Item E, organizational businesses, uh, an appointment of Joe Mercado, the District 4 resident to the Finance Committee. Hanneman and Eichmann. Uh, Madam Clerk. Alderwoman Eichmann. Aye. Alderwoman Wilhelm. Aye. Alderwoman Hanneman. Aye. Alderman Nelson. Aye. Motion carries four ayes, no noes, no absent, no abstention. Uh, two absent, no abstentions. Uh, we move on to reports and recommendations. Uh, been asked to uh, move G1 back, but the city attorney advises it would be more appropriate to keep it where it is. So with that, we move to item G1, which is a resolution to accept the donation of outlot three from Loomis and Ryan Inc. to the city of Franklin and uh, change the word dedication to donation. Yeah. Who's, who's gonna do this? Uh, Mr. City Attorney, and then all around the world. This is uh, the short summary. Common Council accepted the donation last October 19th, 2021 at a council meeting. I know I had talked to the city engineer on the phone with some question about the subject matter or whatever. Um, he was unavailable to be at the meeting that night. Um, my recollection and notes are that the council uh, approved it within one minute, minute of basically no discussion. And um, I had recommended as I, uh, what I discussed briefly with the city engineer, I think that afternoon that uh, be subject to any changes by the um, city engineer and the city attorney. And then after that fact, a couple of things rolled in a month or so later, and I received a quit claim deed for the entirety of the outlot um, that was recorded the day before that council meeting, as well as um, I believe a 90 page appraisal. And I received a uh, tax form for a non cash charitable contributions. Um, generally speaking, I was on the periphery of this scenario. I understood that it had started with the city engineer um, requesting a dedication for the trail, et cetera. So um, over uh, end of November through December, um, tried to get a lot of questions answered um, among staff. And ultimately, um, when the tax bill rolled in, I believe, um, worked with the um, administrator and we got a, um, a decline filed with the register of deeds saying, no, this is not accepted by the city at this point in time. And that was recorded. So um, followed up uh, with summaries of questions. Um, follow up again with staff and I'm going to say mid spring. And then finally a week or two ago, this rolled in, I think with 11 other items later on a Friday morning before a Tuesday common council meeting. And this subject was on the agenda at the last meeting. And that's why I asked it to be put over because I still had questions and, um, inquired again, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, finally got some answers. Uh, later last Tuesday afternoon, and then I had to be at the League Municipal Attorneys Institute Wednesday, Thursday, and till Friday afternoon. So in any event, here's, here's the summary. This 
a little over 22 acre outlot was on the plat as an outlot. It does have a, a stormwater pond, which has to be maintained by the owner. And ultimately that goes to the homeowners association of the adjoining residential neighborhood being developed and um, doing the factual research on it. Uh, the city has it as the entire 22 plus acres assessed at $22,600 of value. And um, at least through last Tuesday, I did get answers from engineering and uh, planning staff that <laughs> with regard to this property, their thoughts are it's, it's essentially non-developable um, due to just the uh, conservancy areas on the property, the storm stormwater pond, um, the tree vegetation growth on uh, uh, rolling hillsides, et cetera, et cetera, which is why it became an outlot. And um, you know, it's currently landlocked. Um, and so both the city engineer and the um, city planning manager thought that it's essentially not developable. And that's the bottom line with that. With regard to, and I had shared the appraisal as well as the quick claim deed, et cetera, when I received that late last year with staff, et cetera. Um, with regard to the appraisal, the appraisal is uh, prepared by uh, Mogenberg Company, um, which is a reputable uh, private appraiser company and uh, signed off by two of its certified, Wisconsin certified appraisers. And throughout the, um, I believe, 90 pages, um, bottom line provisions were, they determined that uh, approximately 15 plus acres of the property are developable, which tends to raise questions as to why this became an outlet. And number two, that the appraised value was $1,010,000 which on a quick calculation is a little over 44 times what the city has it assessed at. So in any event, I did talk to attorney Hotfit, uh, who is um, the Baird Development in-house attorney a few times. And uh, what he said uh, recently uh, when I raised this issue with him was that that is a very common practice that uh, they've had with many municipalities off the top of my head I'm remembering I could be wrong, wrong on this but I think it was in the number of around 40 some or more that uh, other municipalities have um, accepted these donations and with regard to this donation I was also provided a Internal Revenue Service Form 8283 non-cash charitable contributions that um, the developer property owner would file, and you know it describes the property and and the appraised fair market value, et cetera, et cetera, and then it requires a donee acknowledgement at the end, and uh, part of uh, that. It, brief acknowledgement provision does uh, the, the organiza charitable organization acknowledges that it is qualified as a charitable organization, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the organization affirms that in the event it sells the property within three years, you have to file a form, the city would have to file a form 8282, don't e information return. Um, and the acknowledgement ends with this acknowledgement does not represent agreement with the claimed market value, fair market value. So went through all that. I did track down the form 82 and it appears to be simply informational. 
I found nothing more than that reading the form 8282 instructions just in key, case for some unknown reason if the city accepts the donation and then transfers um, the outlet property to someone else that that would be required. I found nothing in detail as to whether there would be anything cost uh, related in that regard other than informational and it would potentially I'm assuming go to whatever um, the current property owners tax credit um, involves as opposed to uh, something for the city but I found nothing on point so all that considered and with discussions with staff etc and um, talk to the mayor about it Friday after all this information had finally rolled in and thought was the council should be made aware of this. Um, bottom line, staff recommends the acceptance of the donation. What had happened here apparently is that city engineer had asked for a dedication of just the trail part and the developer turned around and said, take the entire parcel. So now you don't, don't need a trail easement because it would be city owned property, et cetera, et cetera, which is why this subject matter has been on these agendas. And um, the trail easement that's in the packet is basically irrelevant if the council accepts the donation. And then the other item in the, um, agenda meeting packet was the um, access agreement for the owner owners association to be able to access the um, stormwater pond for maintenance purposes and I have a few corrections that would have to be made to that one so that's the bottom line and Ernie Hotfed is here from Bear Development if you have any questions from the developer or anything we're going to hold for a minute I'm not getting audio on the stream and if we can reset the will be audio do we know that zoom has audio? okay Okay, Alderman Wilhelm. Oh. Whoops, sorry, sorry, sorry. I got you, go ahead. Okay. Well, I know when this came forward with G17, I wasn't happy with it and um, I'm glad it was tabled, but it came back um, with uh, a, lot of, a lot of concerns still in it. So I spent, probably three hours feathering through these documents. And there are a lot of concerns with the language and the wording about what we're doing and how this is taking place. I just wanna give the council just a quick history um, about another similar issue where developer comes in, there's a stormwater management, city wants a, you know, an easement to access the stormwater pond documents are put together by three attorneys and the homeowner association still comes up and they end up with an attorney in the homeowner association and start questioning the documents. So it's really important for the city's protection that these are clear, very clear um, and to protect the city. And if I'm, I'll bring up a few few of the points, but the first analysis is this is a land donation. And in my opinion, it should be just an easement. We don't need the stormwater basin. It complicates this situation. It complicates the maintenance agreement. And some of the language talks about facilities, which the facilities aren't spelled out, except for the in the resolution where it says stormwater facilities, and then later on it talks about facilities. 
So that can right there is just one item that can be confused with what is happening in the documents. Back to facilities, mm -hmm. even though I have corrections to that particular document, it does state that the standard form city water facilities maintenance agreement was already executed and recorded, I think uh, in April of 2021, the city engineer is nodding his head. So that's the standard form that's been used on everything. So that's the facilities reference. So there's already a separate document that would be on the record of each property owner's parcel that describes all that. And with regard to your comments about that other scenario, <laughs> that was pretty close to one of a kind. And some might say it wouldn't matter what anything said in terms of well, I what don't, went um, on there. I, I'm hoping that each point of item doesn't get into a debate um, with the points because um, I, they are my opinion. I just thought and, I'd answer your okay. question about- Well, what I wasn't, I, I think there was a misunderstanding about my point because I was referring to page 27 where it says a recreational path sometimes here and referred to as facilities. So that's the- and, City standard form public recreational trail easement be utilized, not the one that's in the packet. And I believe my first point was I didn't know why we need to accept the whole property, which means then, in my opinion, the pedestrian east access easement would still stand. Now we have not made that decision, but I'm saying, should we make that decision? And then I'm pointing out some of the complications with some of the language that's here. So um, so I, I guess my question is, why are we accepting uh, the entire parcel when all we need is an easement? Um, and then um, running through what the city attorney said about the October 19th meeting for the quick claim deed and the council approval. I wasn't at that meeting. Um, however, on page 24, the quick claim deed says that it was um, recorded, or no, the, the, the construct, the, page 22, the correction of easement reads, then on October 18th, a document was contained the following error. And this, this was what was recorded at, in the county records. So the October 18th, it was already recorded before the council took action on it. Well, I know it's, it's that's kind of a, okay, it, as everything I say, well, right accuracy is important, Alderman Wilhelm. I, if and you just said it was the same thing, it's accurate. What I said is accurate. So there's no need to debate me that I'm just because I say the same thing doesn't mean it's not accurate. It means <laughs> that you're being redundant. And I think your, your goal is a bit different than the presentation by the city attorney. So um, go ahead, you have the floor. But remember, the city attorney went through all of these points. My goal is to have accurate, easy to understand documents and make sure that we get what we need to do what we need and no more. And um, that is the goal. So when I look at the um, property viewer, the second owner on it, this is a CDA. So um, I guess the question I have is, since we did the correction, is the property viewer and the information there valid or not valid? CDA doesn't own anything. They are a second owner on the property. I understand viewer. that. I'm well aware of that. Okay. There's some inaccuracy there, and I don't know what caused it. Okay. 
that's that's helpful. So I think the council needs to decide why would it be in our best interest to take the entire outlet? And then um, the legal description on the correction is, is not here for us to read. So I don't know what legal description we had on that. But we have the outlot three is basically split up in two pages as sort of a crayon drawing of the quick claim deed. I, it, it seems like we could do better than that. So the outlot three contains the stormwater basin, this little section of easement, and I'm looking on page 25. A little section of easement that's hashed that has the arrows pointed to that says easement. And then you turn the page and outlot three is the entire area next to the subdivision, including the woodland, which when they laid out the subdivision was part of the natural resource protection plan, which typically stays with, you know, the association for use or something or it, I don't know how they figured out the um, site intensity calculations for the number of lots. And I did not have time to study everything that Mr. Eddy sent me because I asked him, was that calculated as part of the site intensity calculations to get the lots? Um, and how did that play a role in what the Homeland Association should have for their needs in public access? So, that's a concern. And then on page 30, it says the exhibit is all of lot 84. Well, I'm pretty sure we don't want all of lot 84 in exhibit A. And then exhibit B on page 31 is a depiction of the easement, but it doesn't say what easement. Homeowner Association is, I believe, what that should be titled. But it's unclear. What we're, what we're experiencing right now is the problem with providing so much information to the Common Council. We're interchanging easement, site intensity calculations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's, none of that is at issue tonight. What is at issue tonight is, do we accept a donation of this parcel of land or not? That's it. So the common council needs to come to an understanding. Do you want this level of information that provides a suitable amount of confusion on just about every issue that comes before this council? Because you get too much information and the question becomes an issue. This is a very simple question. Do you want this land to be owned by the city with the developer having responsibility and then association have the responsibility for maintenance of the pond? or not, it's that easy. It's got nothing to do with site intensity calculations or any of the rest of that. So <clears throat> at some point, the council's got to come and say, too much information, causing too much con uh, controversy and confusion. Alderman Nelson. I believe I still have the floor. I haven't given relinquished the floor. And I'm going to disagree that it's not important. It's extremely important to understand if the site intensity calculations were included in the, the density of that subdivision. If we give it away, it doesn't really comply with the density that they were allowed to do because it was associated with that. But, um, it, and it does matter if the easement says, if it's a homeowner association easement or what the easement is. How are people going to know when they get the homeowner association document, if this is the city's easement, the homeowner association easement, the legal description, um, matches the homer association easement and you may think this doesn't matter but i have been involved in many of these issues where it does make a big difference and they need to be clean on page 33 description of the easement area again it's I, I can, I there can is an it. easement. There, I'm, there is an easement. We're giving the homeowners association an easement. Mayor Olson, there is an easement. Please do not cut me off. And I'm going to stand corrected 
that there is an easement because the homeowner association has to get an easement from the city in order to get in and access their pond. It's not a strip of land. The easement on page 31 is the entire outlot. Did you see that? You, you know that the city pays uh, employees who have professional certification. And they're wrong. Engineers. Mr. City Engineer. So, so maybe this hopefully clarifies something. So last October, when this item first appeared, there were two issues at stake. One was the fact we need an easement off of lot 84, which was not this lot that we're talking about tonight. They were included in the same issue last October. That's why they were included together. So when you see... As, as referred to the crayon drawing, which is the best we have because they don't have aerials at the time that, that accurately showed where the pond is located. There is not enough room to get a, a trail around the pond. That's why we had to get a sliver of an even, easement off of lot 84. So that hopefully that explains some of the, the confusion there. So I included basically the packet from last October in tonight's packet. That's why it, they're both there. That's why they're because they were together at that time. Tonight, we're not talking about lot 84. We still have that easement, just a sliver, but that's so we could get around the pond. And then the, the idea was, whether you want to accept the old lot or not, I didn't think that was a bad idea because that allows you, say you can put a bench beside the trail or something like that that allows you more room to do things on the out lot. So that's, hopefully that clarifies. That that did clarify why um, the section was on lot 84. So that has been secured and that's already done. Is that correct? Yes. So now you need the other half of the easement on the property. Wouldn't it just be cleaner to just get us the other portion of the easement and not have to give the association an entire easement only over the stormwater management pond that they're obligated to maintain? So we're still under the design. So I, in my mind, it was easier if they were willing to give us the whole lot, just take the whole lot. That way we could make the trail wander wherever we want to, to wander. So if we were to say, I want just an easement over the trail, we've got a timeout. We have to finish the full blown design. I have to know exactly where that trail is going to go. And then I'll have to, you know, it's, it's going to be a serpentine kind of path and be very difficult to stake out in the future. So this is basically because we're not far enough along in the design that you want the whole property. No, I, I think in last October, we anticipated that we were going to do the project. That the reason why it didn't proceed was because of getting it poked out to 112th Street. But, so we now have the ability to do that. I'd like to proceed on the design, but then this was held up when we said so we don't technically own an easement or the lot. So we have to time out. I, I've stopped great last uh, fall from continuing. Um, Alderman Nelson, I, then Alderman Hanman. I did. Go ahead. Uh, okay, thank you. First thing, uh, have we resolved the streaming issue yet for audio? No? Okay. Uh, just to clarify just a couple of points. Uh, number one, is there is there an actual power line issue over there with power lines that currently exist? Is that anything, any concern? It's like, I think it's like over the the lot between the lot 84 and this line, correct? Correct. Okay. It, it's one. wholly on lot 84, correct? Uh, and another thing, so which I wasn't clear on until just now or tonight, which was uh, to make sure that this whole out lot's gonna be taken care of by the HOA eventually. It's not gonna be on the city's responsibility. So, so the idea was, is that, and, and if you were to ask me why it didn't happen last fall, because I was still waiting for the homeowners association proposal on what they wanted to do. Cause I, I didn't wanna take the parcel if we now all of a sudden had to maintain the pond, I didn't want to make sure right. we didn't have to do that. So no, that. Um, what we have done is we've said, okay, the way it's written tonight is you're willing to accept the entire lot, but we give an easement over the pond. So the homeowners association still has to maintain the pond. We don't, we don't have to maintain the pond. Thank you. I yield. Um, <clears throat> taking that a little bit further, um, 
until such a time that we we would take have a trail going through there then is the city by taking ownership of that land we're going to be responsible for the mowing around the pond i think that's my question yeah. because i mean we're pretty stretched as it stands right now and i'm not opposed to, yeah. to taking the ownership of the land i mean i can see why it makes sense but there's still a little gap in understanding that the HOA will take care of just the water facility, but it will be the city's responsibility to, to do, do the all of mowing. the mowing, mowing and yeah. landscaping and, you know. Yeah. yeah, we would mow around the pond, so. But we wouldn't go down in the pond and, you know, excavate stuff or fix whatever pipes, no. That would still be their responsibility. But we would, well, and keep in mind that around the pond, there's really not a lot of, won't be a lot of grass because one side of the pond, pretty much the top of bank is the back lot of those um, residential lots. And the other side, basically the top of bank is pretty much right at the, at the trail. So we might maybe one or at most two passes of the mower beside the trail. Okay. Motion to suspend the rules. A lot of developers. Speak. Nelson and Hanneman, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appreciate the uh, comments on that. I can just tell you how we set up the HOA. Oh, SR Mills, 4180 Street, Kenosha, Wisconsin. You think I get used to that? Not forget it. Um, the, uh, the way that we've set it up with the HOA is certainly they made, and this is any of the HOAs that we do, they certainly maintain the pond. And then we have it set up. It could be at the city's discretion if, if the city wants to mow it. But the HOA would be responsible for mowing in you know whatever the area of the easement is. So I think that's something that at the city's discretion, uh, you can enforce. Uh, and the HOA, the way our thought is, is HOAs always maintain that grass. And and again, we we'll, we're, we're trying to you know we looked at other nonprofits to donate this to, and the idea was that the city wanted to run a trail through there. So we thought it could be you know parklands as we talk about additional parklands. Thought it would be a good 22 acres that the city could put next. Coffers and it just made sense. But. We're definitely not. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is motion regarding this matter? Alderman Well, um, well I, I don't think the city should be maintaining the trail and I don't see anything in the document. I mean, not, not the trail, but the entire parcel. So somehow we need documents that spell that out clearly enough um, that the city doesn't maintain that. Now, without having a location of the trail, we're somehow obligated to that because we have no answer. So how long, Glenn, do you think it will be before we'll have a design where we'll know where the trail's gonna go and what will be the homeowner association's responsibility? So when we, when we know that we have possession of an easement or the land, then I would uh, ask Grave to proceed with the design and I would, Hope we could bid that bid that out this year, whether construction happens now or not. I mean, it's basically July now, so um, not sure construction could happen this year, but I would know within the month, probably. I, I know they've done a lot of the work. They just need to, now that we have the uh, the rise and sing CSM, at least we have a out to, to uh, 112th Street, but if I ask them to show me exactly where the trail is going to be on this out lot, I'm, I'm within a few weeks, say a month of knowing that. Um, well, then can't we just table it? You know the location of the trail and then we can clear up all the documents for the maintenance and the stormwater um, on who's going to maintain that. And then it's very simple. If the desire was to only have an easement for the trail, yeah, you'd have to wait. If the desire was to take it in case you wanted to, you know, put a small shelter, a bird, even a birdhouse, outside of the season, you need that area. So if you want to take the entire parcel, I can find out very quickly. It sounds as if there's not going to be a whole lot of room, you said, for a lot of other amenity, amenities anyway. So um, I think we should just 
table it to you know where you're going to want to place this and just accept the easement for the trail and that would the option would be that you make it very clear in the documents on the homeowner association easement and label of course label which one's homeowner association because i can't tell what which one's which in here but would you make very clear language that although the city um owns the parcel the homeowner association has complete maintenance of mowing the, the property and, and that's what sarah mill said and that's what the language is it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that we're that's, making a mountain out of a molehill that's uh, actually not what the language i i read that, this very thoroughly it, it reads that's it, what it would say is there a motion regarding this matter i make the motion to postpone the trail um, or, or the donation or acceptance of an easement, either either or, until information is available on the location of the trail or um, clear information for the homeowner association easement maintenance is clearly spelled out in um, the document on page. Thirty-five pond access and maintenance easement agreement, which that document is missing anything about mowing. It may be in the stormwater. Is there a second to that motion? Is there a second? Hearing no second, motion dies due to lack of second. Alderman Nelson, uh, I've got a question about that motion that the alderwoman just made. If this recommended motion could simply add something that says that we're not, as a city, I don't know, I'm gonna to yield to the city attorney to simply add a sentence to quote the city attorney in the short version uh, to cover or encompass basically our city's concerns or the concerns that we'd have in the uh, maintenance obligations, would that still suffice that we can move forward and still have clarification that we're not gonna be responsible? I understand you already have a stormwater maintenance agreement recorded. I understand there are some single family homeowners who have already purchased the properties and would have that upon their record. Attorney Hotfed is nodding his head yes. And now somehow you're going to go and amend that to add what thou shalt. Uh, cut two feet of grass around the property that you don't have responsibility for under the stormwater. All right, Alderwoman Wilhelm shaking her head no. Well, Mr. what's City being Attorney. asked for then? Mr. City Attorney, the request merely is that the Homeowners Association maintain responsibility for cutting the grass. Exactly. On That's the for on on the, the area of the stormwater pond. That's it. That would work just fine. And Alderwoman Wilhelm keeps pointing to page 35 or whatever. I already stated earlier, there is a standard form water facilities maintenance agreement that's already been recorded. And that is containing all the obligations for the maintenance of that particular pond and that's the way the city has always done it page 35 second paragraph in recitals right but there is no description in this this should have this simply is here's a pathway to get to that pond it doesn't say what you have to do with the pond because there's already a separate recorded document for that Alderman nelson still has the floor and I guess that's why I agree with all our own Han Hanneman because I just don't want to see our DPW employees taking on more responsibility, more things to take care of. And if it's clearly, clearly spelled out, that was my only concern. And I support the, the uh, recommendation. Is there, a is there a motion on the I will move a resolution. There's nothing to clarify. There's no motion on the floor. I have, I have a point of Alderman Nelson. Point. I'll yield. Okay, Alderman Wilhelm, go ahead. What is the purpose of 
page 35 pond access and maintenance agreement and will we just eliminate it and use the regular stormwater instead? Because this one, this document, which apparently is going to be signed and recorded says nothing about the maintenance. It, it refers to a document, but I'm pretend I'm a homeowner association person and I get this pond access and maintenance easement agreement that's signed by the city and it doesn't say in here so can we just eliminate this document completely? That would probably solve the problem if we're gonna use the storm. I don't know what the, the uh, stormwater standard form says, but this document's a problem on page 35. Mr. City Attorney. If you get to the pond access easement, which is, should be, and is just a pathway to walk across the property to get to the stormwater pond. The recommendation on the motion would be subject to changes approved by the city engineer and the city attorney, because I was not involved in the preparation of this. And in terms of provisions, all this is provision number five, indemnification. It appears to be a cut and paste of city protection because the city's protected by governmental immunity standards under the Wisconsin statutes. And this section has um, association shall indemnify and hold harmless. However, then it says nothing in this agreement um, is to be a waiver or estoppel of the association, but, but with regard to indemnity provision. So someone out there went and took a city form that protects the city under government law for governments and plugged it in for the association. So it's gotta be correct. And it'll be as simple, here's a pathway access easement to get to the pond. Okay, well, that's helpful. Cause you know, I asked for correction. I just get pounded out. It doesn't have to be that difficult that I say this document is not going to work. And, and I get just, bombarded and cut off. And I guess I would like the pond access maintenance easement agreement on page 35 to not call, be called a maintenance easement. Correct. Thank you. Oh, Nelson. So, so I can make this motion with technical, what's your term you like to use, sir? If the motion would be to accept the donation, I would say in such legal transfer conveyance documents as approved by the city engineer and the city attorney, because there would be a new deed conveying it. And I would also want um, to be assured that title has been reviewed so that the property is owned free and clear, et cetera, et cetera. And then with regard to the pond access and maintenance easement agreement in the packet, that that be approved subject to changes approved by the city engineer and the city attorney. And as I believe is in the draft resolution, um, and perhaps resolution gets adopted subject to changes by the city engineer and the city attorney. Um, and I think that would cover it. And I believe in the resolution, it does authorize um, the execution of transfer documents also by the mayor. So the Donee acknowledgement on the non cash charitable contributions form 8283 would be executed by the mayor, just so that's understood. And that would include in the access easement language re regarding turf maintenance by the association. So we are outside of the pond now, they have to maintain the access easement. I didn't hear that earlier. Well, that's that's why I was questioning. Yeah, we don't want to cut the grass. No. That'd be my motion then. Don't ask me to repeat it because that was like. So your motion is. Uh, well, the city attorney covered it, and that's what I would like to add to this 
rec this resolution so it's it appears to be inclusive i would appreciate hearing thoughts from uh the developer in that regard since you have a recorded homeowners association facilities maintenance water facilities maintenance agreement to add an obligation thereon to the easement area being granted for access we're still under suspension rules mr Mills. uh currently the hoa has the obligation to cut the grass within the easement area with around the pond around the pond so the balance of the uh, the whole site is 22 acres the pond component is is a small component of that so the balance of that is, is you, I mean, it could be parklands it could be whatever our thought was to keep it you know, with natural grasses and have it seeded and then i think it'd be very pleasant to have the trail go through and again that's why we thought to uh, donate the balance of the parcel to the city so i do not think it's any issue with you know the area around the pond will be Will be cut and that's what about access to the pond that's what they're talking about here to easement being granted to the association to go from outside well, the property over the property to the pond well, I, I think you'll want the the easement so they can cut the grass too correct so yes, sir and then dredge the pond. and then dredge the pond and do whatever else is right, needed so. I, yes but i'm hearing that council members want the easement pathway to the pond area to also be mowed. It, it, and that's fine because the, the pathway to it is, it's really the immediate area just around the pond as the pond abuts up next to the roadway. Uh, uh, okay, wait, it's getting crazy. Alderman Nelson, let's, yeah. what's your motion? Well, we're, I guess we have a few moving parts to this motion, but I wanna make sure that this recommendation incorporates the concerns that uh, that's why I defer to the city attorney to add a few lines to this well, recommendation. Let me, let, let me do this and you can say that's my motion. Okay. Let's give it a shot. Resolution 20, whatever it is, it's going to be a resolution to accept a donation of an outlot three tax key listed in Ryan Meadows subdivision from Loomis and Ryan Inc. along yeah. Chicory and a dedicated yeah. pond access agreement to Ryan Meadows Owners Association subject to corrections by the city attorney, the city engineer, and the developer. Uh, Mr. Mayor, could you, after it says dedicate pond number two, access and maintenance agreement? Are you good? I, I mean, that's what I, I got reading. rid of. I got rid of the you got uh, rid of maintenance. maintenance agreement because that runs afoul of a previous agreement. That's my motion. I'll second. Um, discussion on the motion. Alderman Will. I think what we forgot to address was we're only talking about getting the Homer Association to mow the stormwater um, easement that's going to be given to the Homer Association, which is on page 31. We're forgetting that all of Outlaw 3 is twice this size. So who's going to mow the rest of the property we're going to get? Well, if you recall what Mr. Mills just said, the intention was is to leave it natural, except of course, obviously a few feet either side of the path. You cannot accept a natural area and leave it natural and never maintain it. You just can't do that. What's going to become Mr. a buckthorn Engineer. nightmare, and I know this because I am part of what we started, the Milwaukee Area Land Conservancy, and the Carity Prairie spends $5,000 or more a year take, doing maintenance on that site just to keep the natural area natural. Mr. You're putting this burden on the city. Mr. City Attorney. So, engineer, I'm sorry. So I don't have exactly the, the acreage, but I would guess at least half is wooded, and we would never take a mower inside. Um, the rest of the site is primarily the pond and a very large berm that would not be mowed. That berm is <coughs> intended to maintain as a screening from the residential to the industrial. industrial site. So it may look like a lot of acreage on paper, but there's really not a lot of areas to mow. C city attorney. Let's not debate this. And I'm a city engineer. I just want to make it clear so the council understands. 
if you accept parkland, you're responsible for maintenance. And just because you may think a woodland doesn't need maintenance, um, look at uh, the Pleasant View Park MMSD property over there where, you know, buckthorn removal, it's, it's going to need maintenance. You can't just leave it go and have it be a decent parkland. So what is the purpose of this parkland if you're just going to never maintain it or do anything with it? Why would we take that on? Why don't we just accept the top half and the bottom half and stay with the association? Can we remember this conversation for the next two items? Can, can we have... Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Any other discussion on the motion? Mr. City and, uh, Attorney. And my understanding that includes any uh, changes to the resolution we've adopted also. Yes, the motion includes any changes necessary to the resolution that was agreed upon by the maker of the motion and the second. Yes. All right, on the motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Madam Clerk. Alderman Nelson. Aye. Alderwoman Hanneman. Aye. Alderwoman Wilhelm. No. Alderwoman Eichmann. Aye. Uh, motion currently, the vote is currently three ayes, one no. Mayor votes aye to affect the outcome. What? Motion it's carries. It's majority of a quorum. It's majority, yeah. Don't need majority, majority of a quorum. Oh, motion carries. Motion carries without the mayor's vote. Uh, so that was almost an hour on one item. We're going to move on to G2. That's why I wanted to have a move. There's a motion to amend the City of Franklin 2025 Comprehensive Master Plan to change the future land use map for property bearing taxis. Yes, I see. Uh, listed from recreational use in areas of natural resource to residential use. Application by Bear Development and Ignacia Investments, Mr. City Attorney. Only that with the attendance um, level of common council members, please be advised that an amendment to a comprehensive master plan uh, per recollection and the planning manager can correct me if I'm wrong, but it uh, requires a majority vote of the members elect of the common council, which would be four votes. Nodding his head, yes. Mr. Planning Manager, you have a presentation on this or no? Not really. We've been through this one several times. We brought it back because of subsequent discussion, also because this is the target date for the current version of this vote, having been tabled the last time at the, I think, the beginning of May, and uh, bringing it back uh, with staff's original. A motion to recommend denial um, consistent with our um, prior recommendations. I'll make the motion by staff and the ordinance to confirm the comprehensive master plan to change the city of Franklin 2025 feature land use map for property bearing tax key number 892-9999-002 from recreational use and areas of natural resource users to residential units. Is there a second? Sorry. Second by Alderman Nelson to deny. Discussion of that motion. <clears throat> Alderman Hanneman. I'm, I'm just interested in the Alderwoman's rationale given the discussion on the past motion, on the past item. keeping it as conservancy and parkland and having more to maintain. That's all. I, I just find it an interesting juxtaposition of. Um, one of them is farmed and can be continued to be farmed. That's my answer. One of them is farmed and can continue to be farmed until we have a plan for it. The other one, we were actually assisting a developer to make money off a parcel that we um, uh, put money into in a TID and, um, and didn't have a very, very well out design. And the documents were very, they weren't clean. 
And um, we should do much better. And there wouldn't have been an hour on the issue if the documents were clean and there wasn't mistakes and corrections. That's my answer. Thank you. Okay, we've mixed a whole bunch of things. This, this area is not in the TID district. So I don't know why I mentioned that. The previous item we discussed, there weren't areas, er, errors in the documents. We have a motion but, on the floor. The documents that were included in the packet are a convenience to the common council members. So once again, deflection. So anyway, anyone else on the motion? All right, Madam Clerk, might as well call the roll. This is this is this is to deny. Alderman Eichmann. To deny, aye. Alderwoman Wilhelm. Aye. Alderwoman Hanneman. Aye. Alderman Nelson. Aye. Motion. Motion to deny carries four ayes, no noes, two absent, no abstentions. Move on to item three, an ordinance to amend the unified development. Well, this is kind of moot. We still need to vote on it, though. Still need to vote on it. Is there a motion? Well, it's written up. Is there a motion to deny the ordinance amending the unified development ordinance zoning map to rezone the property uh, from A2 agricultural to C1 conservancy? Is there a second? Okay. Nelson and Eichmann. Madam Clerk. Alderman Nelson. Aye. Alderman Hanneman. Aye. Alderman Wilhelm. Aye. Alderman Eichmann. Aye. Motion to deny carries four ayes, no noes, two absent, no abstentions. Move on to item G4, a resolution imposing conditions and restrictions for special use for condominium complex development at 12000 West Loomis Road. We are make, I'm going to make a motion. Um, I have a couple amendments before I make a motion. I'd like to amend um, item number four that the item says instead of applicant must submit, submit a conservation easement to city staff review and approval prior to recording with the county and prior to issuing a building permit it should be grading permit uh, we need to know where the conservation easement area is so that would be building permit to grading permit on number six where it says pedestrian path, because there are also sidewalks and a multi-use trail. I strike the word pedestrian path and make it read the sidewalks, plural and multi-use trail on the south side of Ryan. Everything else is be the same. And the last one is um, including condition previously from the plan commission removed as condition number nine to um, comply with uh, staff's comments that they felt that they needed to have the um, soil bearing pressure capacity. And that's my motion. Document resolution with those conditions. There's a second of the motion with the changes. Second. All right, we're, we're back to this load bearing thing again. Any discussion at this point? I'll, I'll make my reasons why I changed it. You know, we spent an hour on this in the plan commission. It's, uh, you guys do what you want. I'm sick of um, this shit. That's inappropriate. The- um, So is most of what's been happening. The council has the right to discuss items and the council has a right to make amendments based on um, what is in the best interest of the city. Um, I know when Phil is put in and someone tries to put a swimming pool in, we don't give them a permit until it settles for five years. So um, there, if uh, the council needs to look at um, the Phil information, you can turn to page 88, where um, it says that um, bill tests by CGC were compacted satisfactory in the general area 
with the project requirements and page for proposed fill areas. The reference central area requires additional drying and recompaction. The applicant has not provided documentation confirming that has been completed. So all they have to do is comply with that and they're fine. We want to make sure that we don't approve things with soil that's too loose. Someone approved the DOT dumping soil and filling conservation easement areas. And all we're trying to do is make sure that the fill is stable fill. That's not, it's part of what the UDO says we're supposed to do is suitable soil. This will make sure all they have to do is provided suitable soil and they can get their information. This isn't, this isn't anything difficult. I mean, suitable soil is a number one thing for a development project. So um, my motion stands and it, it should be very easily complied with. All right, I'll run ahead. Um, I disagree with that. Um, to reiterate, the plan commission discussed this for the better half of an hour. Um, and I believe as a commission, we were satisfied with the results of the discussion and um, that requiring another <coughs> geo survey was extraneous. And that, that top level of soil is going to come off anyway when they build. The soil underneath was fine. So why, I, I don't understand the desire to pull to retest that top level of soil that's coming off anyway. And I think that was the ultimate decision of the plan commission. And I stand by that. Alderman Nelson, your button. So I guess uh, kind of going off what Alderman Hanneman said. So what Alderman, Alderwoman, Wilhelm's talking about, are, are we looking at changing now this whole dynamic or are we simply making clarification to what's already been approved? That's what I took it as, is that, that we already, whatever you discussed and approved was fine. She made a technical correction on the verbiage and wanted some clarification and that was it. So I'd like to yield. To the Wilhelm. addition that Alderman Wilhelm is talking about means more soil tests for the site and potentially compaction. Now, as you heard what Alderman Wilhelm said, after substantial discussion at the plan commission meeting, the same argument, if you know anything about building a house, the house is not built on the top eight inches. The house is built on a foundation set eight feet below ground. This, this eight inches of soil that didn't pass a test because it was wet, is not even gonna be involved in the building process. So all this is, is obstruction, all it is, and costing the developer more money. Now it's not my money, but. That's actually the city engineer, but city attorney, if you wanna do it, go ahead. That's what I was going to suggest. You listen to the developer, knows this in detail, and the city engineer and the city planning manager was at that meeting, though uh, um, associate planner uh, Martinez Montilba um, handled that item. But it went into detail and that all the work that's been done with regard to soils on the property, et cetera, was uh, beyond sufficient and no further testing in that condition was necessary. And that condition had been um, added by the associate planner and some part point during the discussion, he said, you know, I'm not an experienced uh, soil information or um, educated soil engineer person. So. I'd like to my but I'd like a First, if it's, true that what's in the packet is incorrect saying that per the um engineer report that says this says it needs additional compacting and staff recommends that's true but we're now saying it's no longer necessary why wasn't the no longer necessary because we have two 
people, one who looks at the ordinance provisions, one an expert in their field who gives us information, but then the plan commission who are now not the experts, remove the item. So um, I guess if I'm ready to amend my motion, if I can hear that these two items in here are no longer valid. We just forgot to include that information in the packet. Well, um, that's not correct. The engineer's report is correct and valid. And it does state that the top eight inches or so needs additional compaction. It is not correct that uh, principal planner month. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. <laughs> uh, our principal planner is an expert in soil compaction. He is not, and he has admitted that he is not. I said in the his, ordinance. His recommendation was based on the fact that he read the engineer's report. That's it. After the substantial discussion with staff, the city engineer, and the applicant, and common sense, there is some of that left these days, you don't build a house on the top eight inches. You build a house on eight feet down or more. And eight feet down is just fine. Nobody cares about the top eight inches. That's what and we're talking about. I will about. amend my motion that even though the information was not given to us in the council packet to remove my request for number nine, which was the one we were discussing. So my no, Alderman Wilhelm has amended her motion. To remove the um, change remove condition for, nine. for condition nine, which was the one we were having a concern with. And right you're now. leaving the grading change on four and the change on six and that I didn't write down, but relative um, to the sidewalks. Sidewalk, the sidewalks and multi-use path, I wasn't aware that that was on the south side of Ryan Road, that change on that paragraph. Yes. But do not add paragraph nine. That is correct. Who was the second? Oh. Alderman Nelson. Is that, do you agree with that? Alderman Nelson agrees. Anything else on the motion? On the motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You know, I think this condominium kind of development is what, a year or more in the works? Okay, G5, resolution to adopt the Ryan Creek Pedestrian Bicycle Trail. Mr. City Engineer. So last July, Grafe was authorized to prepare this, uh, this plan. Um, they did so, and they've talked to the uh, Parks Commission, and in specifically in January, they presented the maps. Parks Commission was okay with that. Uh, Parks Commission also discussed this again last night. They did not have any changes, so your resolution may say June 2022 is the, the date of the, of the plan. I was left that open in case there are some changes they need to make, but, uh, but they, the Parks Commission is recommending that Common Council do um, adopt this plan. This plan in and of itself does not create any new projects, uh, but it does give guidelines for four projects. So specifically one is you've heard us discuss uh, last time at the, about the um, uh, potential trail across the school property, the Archdiocese property. That would be part of this. Uh, other projects as it develops, we would consider this plan and ask for um, this to be included or at least right away to be dedicated and so forth. So I don't necessarily need to read this. There's, um, for the most part, it's mostly pictures. They added uh, some text to describe what you're looking at in the pictures, but I guess the, if I could make a long meeting short, there is a primary pathway, which is uh, starts on the west side, goes along Ryan Road, crosses Loomis, and kind of cuts down 112th Street and meanders over. It'll eventually connect to uh, what I call the Root River Extension. Uh, from the primary path, you turn the page, your secondary paths, these are what a subdivision would put into the, their subdivisions, and it would basically allow people to connect to the primary path. And then there's tertiary paths. It, it 
points out a few of those issues also. So um, there's some illustrations of what the different paths might look like. There's some, um, as you look through, there's some um, dots on a map to show where they anticipate. Again, these aren't set in stone that they shall go in these locations, but it, it gives a general route of where it anticipates the path to go through. There are some anticipated costs, uh, just for your information along, um, don't have a page here, but um, 21. Yep, you're correct. 21 of this packet. Um, there's some cost options, opinions of probable costs, I should say it that way. And um, implementation has got some process. So we will we will consider this when we put together future uh, projects and budgets and, and considerations when a uh, developer comes through. So again, the Parks Commission uh, recommended to Common Council that you adopt this plan. Um, before we go into the discussion, I just want to add a couple of things. On page 21, you see the large paragraph on the left starts with the total length. It's important yes. to note that there's a substantial amount of investment in county lands. And you all know how I feel about that. Um, a substantial as to about half, I think. Um, I will let Common Council know that the Intergovernmental Cooperation Council is going down a path to try to come to a solution on fixing the county parks problem. I'm on that committee. Greenfield Mayor Nitsky on that committee. Um, and part of that is going to be a definition of what really a park is for the county. Um, and things like this would not be a county park. And uh, in my definition and in the definition of a couple of people that are going to be on that committee. But be careful. Let's not say that we're approving this plan when it includes a whole lot of money going on a county park land. Yeah, that's I, not an appropriate use. Of so yeah, again, there's no commitment to, to do a project. I would also note that um, at your, I don't know if it's at your table or at your mailbox, you saw 11 by 17 map that shows where all the county uh, I'm sorry, I hope where all the trails in the city are or are planned to be so far. Um, we had a discussion last meeting regarding just the overall trail. So those are depicted on that map. If you have any changes, let me know and we can, we can make that change. But uh, the point why I mentioned it here is the fact that this, these trails are, are indicated on that map. So we're going to do Nelson, Hanneman, Will. I yield. Thank you. Um, your comment well taken about the investment on Milwaukee County land. Um, conversely, though, as people utilize trails to get from one place to another, I don't know that from their perspective, they say, we're cruising along on our bicycle. Oh, trail stops because now it's county land. Um, and where do we go to pick up again where it's on city land? You know, people, the average person doesn't um, have a perception of where those boundaries are. And so there's got to be a middle ground somewhere to put together a, um, a wonderful <coughs> cohesive trail project. Um, and like we say, there's no commitment to this spending as it's sitting here, but we, we have to have a starting point. We have to have a big picture. And um, I honestly view this trail plan as something that could be 25 to 30 years um, into a full build out. But as we look at some of the primary trail corridors, getting that put in, and then as we have developers come in, in some of these areas where there are more tertiary trails, um, that it's opportune to sort of infill and, and build that. Um, you know, I, I don't think anybody looks at this and says, oh, we're gonna get this done in all one fell swoop. Um, so I just want to make that little comment. Thanks. Uh, I agree. Hunter, I do want to point out that the title on this document says Ryan Creek Pedestrian Bicycle Trail Master Plan. Let's not have a repeat of what a master plan is. This is not a master plan. This is it says, plan. It says plan. No, nope. on, the, on the bottom. Oh, uh, well, you missed one. Well, I, I love the fact that um, we're actually trying to put together a larger plan. And I think this is a really good start. I would like to see us just adopt this plan in concept 
only. And so I would make the suggestion that we have the resolution say a resolution to adopt the Ryan Creek pedestrian bicycle trail plan in concept. That would be the one change I would, I would make to that. Um, I agree that um, based on my experience, I helped with laying out the Milwaukee River Trail. And what um, I did when I was working on that plan was identified all the property owners and put together a prioritization of the tax key numbers of the um, parcels that would be needed um, as you know the project moved forward for the trail. So everybody was on the same page. So um, I want to make um, the motion that makes it clear that as Glenn said, that there no portion of the document will um, give the um, um, privilege uh, to for you know the process um, to move forward uh, without returning to the council. So um, I've created a um, motion, and this is also will include based on the council wanting to see a concept plan and the mayor agreed that we would come forward with a larger concept plan. So Okay. Are the sidewalks on here as well? Is that what's here? I think the sidewalks are on here, so it goes down the road, right? Future Street, on Road well, Street. So location. The major thoroughfare. Okay. Well then I I can um I can amend my motions as so um, um, to adopt the resolution, a resolution to adopt the Ryan Creek Pedestrian Bicycle Trail Plan in concept and direct staff to provide um, or to in, not instead of provide, it's include the full trail pedestrian connectivity map as provided this evening. Um, into the plan and that no portion of this document shall give negotiation privileges um, under the process 19-9 of commencing projects and return to the common council prior to funding allocations within the budget. Of any projects. Second. By the way, I don't consider that finished because I want to take a look at it graphically and see if I can well, make it more. It's a good clearly. start to go into the existing. So yeah. anyway, any discussion on that motion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That was that was totally lacking in energy. Uh, G six request to approve the transfer of public health manager to public health specialist for the twenty twenty two budget, and approval of hiring for public health specialist. Now the council should do us all a favor and get Director Gott's lead in front of us and grill the daylights out of her as her first thing in front of the common council. Agreed. Okay, Madam Director. <laughs> I can share the wealth. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Any? Want here to have a seat? Yeah, have a seat. Any questions for staff on this matter? I'm giving you static. I, I do. Alderman Wilhelm. Um, I guess I would just like someone to address um, the back and forth that we've done several times on changing this position and what the difference is between the two, since the documents weren't in here. Sure. I'm happy to clarify that. In 2019, we created the public health specialist position, and that's an individual who is able to do a lot of robust community health improvement planning, community health assessment, and focus on educational programming in our department. Um, from there, there was a creation of a public health manager position um, in which I internally applied for and moved into that role. Um, that left the public health specialist role vacated. Um, and then with 
our former director, Courtney Day, stepping down, I then was an internal candidate to the health and human service director position in which I accepted. And now that leaves a vacancy as public health manager. Uh, after my assessment of where our department's at and our current department and staffing needs, I felt most appropriate to go back to hire a public health specialist at this time. Um, we talked about this slightly at personnel last night, uh, that it would be appropriate to potentially reassess this in the future to see if we want to transition it back to being a public health manager. Uh, but where our department is currently at, the climate of public health um, demands of the department and community services, I felt it best lie with a public health specialist being hired. There is a difference in salary grade and public health manager is more oversight of all of the budget of grants and the grant work. And this will specifically be the management or work on projects as a staff member. A public health manager would be more responsible at a higher level for the different grant programs and projects that the department is working on to ensure that we're meeting standards, meeting our goals, outlining clearly our vision. Public health specialists will be more boots on the ground working those programs um, and then oversight of the grant budget would fall under my purview. Uh, moved, and second, moved by Hanneman, seconded by Alderman Nelson. Uh, just before we go, I want to compliment uh, Lauren on the job she did this morning on the public health needs assessment. Did I get it right? Do I get a star? Yes, it is part of the public health needs assessment. Uh, a meeting of many members of the community, discussion of the health needs of the city, and it was well done. So thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. On that motion, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. G7 is uh, a second time through for uh, Business View magazine feature. Mr. Regis, do you want to bring us through this as much as you can? Sure. Just looking for your approval to collaborate with Business View magazine again, um, just following the same process that was followed two years ago uh, to engage them and put together. Uh, an eight page uh, feature article, which will be included in their digital online magazine. And uh, then we'll have the ability to use that uh, content uh, for our purposes as well. And so uh, the cost will be nothing to the city. Uh, there'll be a letter invitation letter sent out to uh, businesses that will invite them to advertise in the magazine ad in, in the article. So that's how it's funded. Alderman Nelson. Uh, good evening. So one quick point to this, which is kind of related to this thing, but you mentioned it just now about communicating, contacting the local businesses. So you have a log, an accurate, up-to-date log of what businesses exist in our city and where they are and so on and so forth. Example, if we wanted to find out how many uh, banks or lending institutions are in Franklin, we have that information. Uh, the information that the uh, vendor has, uh, Business View is a list of vendors uh, with the city. And so that's going to be reviewed to see, to, to determine accuracy. Two different things. Okay. You're looking for businesses in the city? Yes. They're not going to contact them. They're going to contact our vendors. Got it. All right. Uh, Neil. But an answer to your question, we have lists the accuracy is somewhat dubious because everybody changes and we just don't spend a lot of time maintaining them. But if you wanted to know that information, John could take it out for you. So, so we'll confirm it. We'll verify it and confirm it. And that's what the, the magazine has asked for anyways. Thank you. But again, these are our contractors. That, and this is second year for this. So they've already gotten this letter. Anyone else? Uh, moved by Alderman Nelson. Seconded by Alderman Hanneman. Anybody else? All those in favor of that motion, sing if I was saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, John. Uh, G8 on page 177 is a resolution approving the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources NR208 Compliance Maintenance Report for 2021. 
Mr. Environmental Commission Chair Member. Motion to adopt a resolution approving the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources and our compliance report. Aye. Nelson and Eichmann, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. By the way, uh, city engineer, Mr. Reggett and I spent two hours today with the new regional uh, DNR manager. Seems like an engaged and, and qualified guy. We bent his ear hard. And he, I think he got it. So anyway, okay. Uh, G9 page 191 is a review and consideration to clarify and amend the code of conduct. Um, so who's doing this? Madam Alderman Nelson. Okay, I'm gonna uh, kind of pick up the pace a little bit. So if there's something going on and somebody wants to reach out, please, uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I, if you wish, uh, Mr. Mayor, I can just go section by section and then we make a motion to yay or nay at the end. Is that what you're, is that what you want? I'm fine. I, whatever moves it along. Uh, section one, basically, um, you know, looking for the references and I know there's probably gonna be other discussion by other electeds up here about what this would mean. Uh, these two documents are extensive, avoid I'm gonna go right to the insert uh, proper references uh, under section one. These two documents are extensive, avoid confusion and burdensome reading for compliance by inserting the reference code numbers of the code and statutes include the administrative policies and procedures as index available in the clerk's office, pretty straightforward. I'm I'm not, I'm guessing I'm going to make these changes, but I'm not sure what you're talking about. So if you could help me with that. I'll yield the older woman. What's the clarification you wanted on my motion? I just want to know what changes, what, what changes have to be made to the document? What are you referring to when it says well, inserting the reference code numbers of the code and statutes? What does that mean? Well, it says the code of conduct works in conjunction with these codes, but he says it doesn't have the code. So I'm saying insert, I agree with him. Insert the municipal code number, like what is it? Like, you know, whatever the number is. And then state statute number 62, whatever. And then he added the administrative policies, which um, I totally agree with that one. So, so you want us to add, I, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be difficult. I just don't understand. My motion is um, to, as stated, insert the proper references. Reference number one would be the municipal code number. Reference number. And what is that municipal code number? It's whatever you said it works in conjunction with i'm just going by your language you wrote you wrote that it works in conjunction with the municipal code so there must be sections that this yes. elected appointed officials that you were referencing I'm so those this code those codes are already included that was in reference my comments I, were i'm just making i agree that it it doesn't hurt to be duplicated it's the right up front. This is the first section of it. It works in con conjunction with what municipal code and what state statutes. So I'm agreeing with that. And then he had the include the administrative policies and procedures. I, I, you look back in here in the code. I Again, it says these two documents, I'm assuming that means the code of conduct and the rules and all the places where the code of, where the municipal code and state statutes is referred to those sections are all included already. So I would just need some direction on what you would like me to I, include. I guess I'm not understanding the, the confusion. Plan. Go to the top of section one on page one of the code. This code of conduct works in conjunction with the city of Franklin municipal code and state of Wisconsin statutes. So I will spend the rest of my life going word by word through the statutes and the municipal code to see what possibly would be referenced in general in the code of conduct. I don't think that's a good idea. Then if we're, 
Go ahead, madam. And, hey. and I agree. That's why we're yes. trying to insert it. Yeah. If so, so when it says it works in conjunction with, it it just was stating the fact that it's in concert with it. It's not in, it's not saying something that is negative in the other documents. But if you go to the rules, which is the second document in there, mm -hmm. there's references, a ton of them about where that is in state statutes and where that is in the code. We already did that referencing. So if there's some referencing that's not in there that you would like us to add, please let us no. know what that is. There, there would not be code no. references no. in the code of conduct because that regulates conduct. Just in the ethics part, right. there would be in the back of the code of conduct. It refers to state All statutes. the rest what? of it is okay. talking about human nature. So there isn't. You don't legislate human nature. So there's not something in the statutes or code that I know of that says to use formal titles. I don't know where we, as the city attorney said, right, I'm going to make the I don't know what we do. So this is all about Franklin Municipal Code Chapter 19. So I'll say it works in conjunction with Franklin Municipal Code Chapter 19. And that's the only thing we're going to add. And then it's in there. on. Uh, we're going to add that right there. It's, it's, second paragraph. it's, it's not in this sentence. On the next one, on the state statutes, it's 62, I don't know, like 62, 62. I'm looking right at it. So you're probably in the rules, Mayor. Yeah. This is the code of conduct. Yeah. The first different. paragraph okay. of the uh, conduct. And so one works with chapter 19, one works with chapter 62. And the other one what is- What about 66? And what about 55? <laughs> chapter 55 in the municipal code. Uh, yeah, I know. Right. That was not the intent to make this a circus. I'm, I apologize. I thought- uh... Well, it's become- I would refer to the city attorney on how we can clarify this so we're not sending people to um, read the entire municipal code and state statutes in order to comply. I would delete Please. the word, the sentence that starts with this and ends with statutes. Delete that sentence. I don't I, know I where we are in the code that I can even see an example <laughs> of what is being asked to be changed. It's not. It's. I know it's this general motion that covers the whole thing point some provision in the code to me that needs it oh, but needs i'm fine with the clarity i don't want to belabor this i I'm I'm, still yield I'm, but wait i'm sorry a minute. i didn't understand i insert the proper references to the municipal code and to the municipal state statutes there has to be codes and state statutes that are related to this That's item there are not codes that relate to the code of conduct. It's no. That's it's, a conduct code. It's not a statute. It, so what in here, can I just ask Elder Wilhelm, what in here would you refer to state statute or code on that's not already referenced? Can you pick a section? I just asked. I think, I think you're just doing this just to make complications and confusion. It's pretty basic. He just says reference the documents because they're extensive. And I, I would agree that the documents, if you say, hey, you have to comply with this um, under the municipal code, that means municipal code even includes how you do anything. And the municipal code is this thick. Yes. So with all due respect, saying, with all due respect, I'm not trying to make anything difficult. I feel like you're the one that's trying to make it difficult because mm -hmm. there's no reference to state statutes or code specifically in these parts, or we would have noted them. That was our goal as we went through it originally. So if you can just point out for me one section that there's a section of code or, um, or any, all the sections that you want referenced, I'm happy to reference all of those. I just don't know what they are. So I can't follow through on a council directive that I don't have direction on. Well, I don't know, but I would, um, I would certainly say you should include the administrative policy procedures in that sentence. 
if nobody wants to come up with what other coding chapters, my motion will oh. be to insert after statutes and including the administrative policies and procedures as indexed in the clerk's office. Does that help everyone? There's a second then. Uh, second discussion though. Every motion, Alderman Nelson. <clears throat> Uh, just, uh, Madam Director of Administration, so are you clear on that part, though? I, 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 I didn't, I didn't mean to There's just going to be a statement perky. that says the Code of Conduct works in conjunction with the City of Franklin Municipal Code and State of Wisconsin statutes and administrative policies and procedures as indexed as available in the clerk's office. Yes. And I'm assuming the clerk would have a document that if somebody wanted to see it, they could If see they it. wanted to see it and research it, that's where they would find it. Sure. Fine with that. On that motion, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Madam Clerk. Alderwoman Eichmann. Aye. Alderwoman Wilhelm. Aye. Alderwoman Hanneman. No. Alderman Mills. Aye. Three ayes, one no, two absent, no abstentions. Motion carries. Next one, Alderman Nelson. Uh, section two. Uh, elected officials and commission board committee members conduct with one another. Uh, simply restated to, which is stated here, elected all the persons and the mayor here and after the common council have a rep responsibility to set policy and carry out policies for the city. Policy setting is a function of the legislative branch, elected all the persons while the executive branch mayor assures policies as set by the council are carried out with staff assistance. So I guess I just want to clarify that portion of it uh, in section two to be added. Simple. My only question on that one is where it says the legislative branch, it says elected elder persons. Do you want to say, and the mayor, since the mayor is part of those discussions? Yes. So basically in section two, we're just going to replace the first sentence that is currently there with this new sentence. Well, hold on. I believe the mayor's part of the legislative branch. Well, he, he, he's part of the body to make the policy. City attorney can weigh in. Yeah, well, I guess my, my initial point was in the spirit of this looking at a, the elected older people being the, you know, the policy makers. And that was my uh, basic point on that, but I'll yield for now. There's more discussion. If there's no more discussion, I'll make the motion. Oh, well, wait a minute. Is there a second? To replace the language as written. As stated on here. And I, I mean, if we're going to add the mayor in there too, then that's fine. I mean, I just that's I wanted to make sure that we had some clarification. And that's it. Uh, Good. There's no second. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Alderman Wilhelm needs clarification on one sentence. Would you like me to read it, Alderman um, Nelson? I, I could ask for what I want the clarification for first, right? And I can tell this is going to be a really fun night. And I think we should put something in here that um, if the mayor wants to debate, he needs to pass the gavel to the council president because this is what's causing us to, to go on and on and on is because the mayor keeps debating the legislative branch. So my clarification is it's always been my understanding, like it says the legislative branch is the elected alder persons and the executive branch is the mayor. And now you're saying the mayor is both, he's both because he, he's able to set policy by making recommendations, but he himself does not set policy because he doesn't vote on the policy. It says policy setting is a function of the legislative branch. The legislative branch, are, to my knowledge, is all of you sitting up there because you all make decisions on policy. Mm -hmm. If I'm wrong, city attorney, please correct me. Government 101. 
mayor's a member of the council. Mayor's not counted in determining whether a quorum exists. However, if the if there is a tie vote, the mayor breaks the tie and is part of the legislative action. So therefore, I would say yes. The mayor okay. has legislative policy duties within the realm of mayor's office, as well as being the chief executive officer as set forth in uh, the Wisconsin statute. Um, okay, so um, there was something I read somewhere that said exactly what the city attorney said and clarified that the mayor's role um, oh, yeah, right here. The mayor's policy role is fulfilled by recommending policies to the council, breaking ties, and through veto power. Well, we'll just insert that in there because then if we insert that note into there, you don't need the mayor himself to set the set policy note, but that clarifies that there is the um, executive branch, there's the legislative branch, and that the mayor has executive powers by fulfilling them through those methods, just like the city attorney said. So if you put that sentence into that, I would suggest you do that, um, Alderman Nelson, to your if post. it's If it's gonna clarify it and the city attorney thinks it makes sense with that, then I'm fine with it. Then I would second that um, amendment to the motion to insert. That the statutory citation that uh, I sent you this morning Um, no, that has to do with the mayor being the chief executive officer and um, his responsibilities to make sure laws are, are um, observed and enforced. This okay. is different than this. Section. Where is it from? Where is what from? What you just read. Mayoral policy rule. Um, it's in front of me here. And I think it clarifies the motion. But is it from a statute no, or the immune code? The entire document isn't from a statute. This is the this is the document we're working with. But you're we're setting you're making a motion to change some language and you read the language. So why would that language already be in the policy or in the code? What are you reading from? Look, this is a code of conduct and we get to set it. And what I saw is he wants to clarify what the positions are. We have a right to do this. If we it doesn't have to be in, in there because this home rule, home rule allows this body to set however we see, and this does not change state statute. It doesn't conflict with state statute. It clarifies. And I see nothing wrong with clarifying the mayor's role as how the council determines that and that's that's my that's my second he amended it and that's my second and i i'm going to call the question is there a second on calling the question is there a second on calling second. the question on the calling the question all those in favor aye, aye. Any opposed? On the question, Madam Clerk, can you uh, attempt it, reading it back? Um, well, I'm not sure that we reached a decision on whether or not we were going to replace a legislative branch with the wording to include the mayoral policy role is fulfilled by recommending policies. So, um, I guess what I'm going to read and correct me if I'm wrong, Alderman Nelson, is that the um, section two should be restated to read as follows. 
the elected alder persons and the mayor here and after call here and after the common council have a responsibility to set policy and carry out policies for the city. Policy setting is a function of the legislative branch. <clears throat> As uh, I don't know. Well, well, the executive branch mayor assures policies set by the council are carried out with the staff. And then I added to his motion and he accepted my amendment was the mayor policy roles fulfilled by recommending policy to the council, breaking ties and through veto power, which is what the city attorney said. And what about the mayor himself? No, no, that? but I don't want that in there. <coughs> So, I mean, after after I, can, I the question has been called. I just have a question after that vote. All right, on the question, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The opposed. No. Does this say that the mayor is the person who recommends policies? Because I believe the whole council. It's the whole council. recommends policies. This leads me to believe that we're focusing recommending of policies on the mayor. I, I, just a point of clarification. Um, my. Myself. Wait a minute, everybody stop. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Nelson. Aye. Alderman Hanneman. No. Alderman Wilhelm. Aye. Alderman Eichmann. Aye. Motion carries three ayes, one no, two absent, no abstentions. Mr. City Attorney. I never got an answer to my question. All the woman will well, tell him to push his button. All the woman will help as to where that came from. And now I hear it's some short summary of what I just said five minutes ago or whatever. And I don't think it reads properly or whatever that's worth. I just remind my council colleagues, because yes, we're all elected to the similar positions. The more words you add, the more trouble you're going to get. <laughs> All right, Mr. Alderman Nelson, you still have the floor. Oh, I'm sorry, Madam Director of Administration has a question first. I, I, I guess the question is answered by the vote. It'll just, d does the word and uh, the legislative branch elected all the persons in the mayor or not in the mayor? And the mayor, given what the city attorney said. But you see folks, you called the question, you approved calling the question. And the question was voted on. If you don't understand what the vote is on, don't vote. Okay, so we don't have a clue what was just approved is the net of all of that. So Alderman Nelson, you still have the floor and that question remains unanswered. Well, we moved, we voted and we moved for the, I, I thought we were clear now on the, on that. Are, are you? So just one clarification. So the clerk said section two is replaced. It's really just the first section of section two. First section, section two. The first sentence of section two is replaced with everything that's listed here. After elected elder persons, it says, and the mayor, and we're going to add the first sentence of the note. That's what I understand it to be. Uh, are we moving on now to social media? Good. Uh, so I, I, and this is, you know, looking at this, what, what the plan was or what the, my, my view was, was to not create a more, any, any more work for any city office or professional, just to have some discussion on what and how we could move to have a city Facebook page. Not that we are, you know, having these other entities are running these individual community pages where someone may hijack our our logo and people get the you know misconception that this is actually a city page with uh, all sorts of comments and sometimes chaos so it was just for an open discussion on that and get get us talking about that's something to look at but i guess one of my questions was under the social media and this is for a city attorney, is, is that our, our city logo, is that trademarked by the city of Franklin? And can someone simply take that and use that and do their own thing? My understanding on trademark is no, it's city trademark. However, uh, 
We had that conversation last year and we decide the council decided as a body not to trademark it because we got some legal advice as we were working with the tourism commission and the legal advice was the city still owns it. So basically if somebody uses it without the city's permission, the city basically says stop and they're required to stop. And there are legal remedies in case if, um, if they, they don't do stop. Okay. So just now that we're kind of going down this a little bit. <clears throat> so if somebody just uses it and well, let's do two things. First thing is if they, if they ask permission, who are they asking permission to? The common council. Okay, so the council would have to approve somebody using it independently. Unless if it's the only, the thing I'm thinking of is like civic celebrations, they're part of the city. So of course they use it. Um, staff just make sure <clears throat> they use it judiciously and not like um, in a marketing sense of the way. I'm but council has to, any unrelated entities would have to get the approval of council to use the logo. Okay, so that's, that's fine. So somebody just couldn't, No. Well, I want I, I want to make sure that someone just isn't going to take our our logo, create their own blog, and then start you know attacking others. And now people think, oh, that must be the city's website. City, you know, I, I I don't want that. So how you clarified it right there that the council has to give approval authorization, I'm fine with that. And then just to clarify, that has happened. Yes, city. It has. The clerk actually has said stop. So that's staff is under uh, staff understands that directive and is already following it. But my point is, is be careful what you ask for, because there's documents in here provided by contractors, mm -hmm. which none of us would have a problem. They use our logo. Our logo gets used a lot by other people. Yours is a separate in instance that nobody would argue must be stopped, but can't regulate common sense. I urge you all to be careful what you want to go down, the path you want to go down. So. It's going to be streamed as soon as it's done. We, I mean, we can try it, it, it. We just have to figure it out. Okay. Well, we need more than five minutes. If I shut this down, I can't bring it back up in the same session. But if I don't shut it down, I can't start, shut the system down. It, it's just being recorded. And after the meeting, we would be able to put it up immediately. I mean, the, they weren't, they couldn't comment anyway, but I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy if council says shut it down, we can shut it down. I just can't, then I won't be able to bring up a clean video. Right, but then technical difficulties happen and we, that's why we have a backup of Zoom. So that's why we run Zoom every time so that we still have a video. Again, we can shut it down. I just won't have a clean video any longer. It, it's basically shutting the entire system off with a power button. But when you use we hope. I mean, I can't tell you that we're going to fix the sound issue right now. He did insert it. There were some Microsoft updates that could be affecting this, but I don't think it is. There's people have been, someone gave Glenn a sign yesterday that said, turn on audio in council chambers, which means nothing because you don't, you just have to turn on the system. And so they turn it off. We have it recorded. It's recording on the system. 
It's recording on Zoom, so we're going to have a video and audio after the meeting to put up immediately after the meeting. We stopped the recording because of the this, but we have an audio recording as well. So we have three, usually we have three items, three going, three proofs, and right now one of our proofs is not working. You'd have to restream. You're, we can't we can't do it until you restream. There's been a lot of meetings in here in the last week. Can you? The what? Like I said, somebody goes and pushes the buttons. I, I don't know what that means, but when Glenn showed me that, I know you didn't touch it yesterday, but for some reason, people think they, they bring the remote over. City of Franklin meeting of 